but unfortunately due to time, I'm not probably going to get to read the whole thing. Um, so I'm just going to like try to get around some of the stuff just to break it down to you on what my experience and my nightmare with the VHS. In September 18, 2017, our nightmare began when a very aggressive and professional, not public, properly trained and biased VHS worker came to my home demanding I let her in. Even though she was very nasty and ignorant, I still allowed her to come into my home as I had nothing to hide. After entering my home, the social worker yelled and screamed at my fiance and I in front of my two daughters that she also started to scream at my children as well. The social worker was approving, was not approving of us, um, of our militant style of parenting is what she called it. By militant style parenting, what she meant was she didn't approve of us grounding the girls when they got into trouble. She did not approve of us taking away their cell phones, their social media, and their electronics. She also did not approve of us giving the girls each a chore to do to help around the house since they do got their cell phones and we pay the bill. We want to teach them responsibility of you want something, you got to earn it, you got to work for it. That's right. So, my daughters and I, oh, I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous, don't mind. This, um, the social worker's exact words to me in front of my two daughters with a very nasty tone was, and I quote, what you need to do, Mom, is you need to beat them, but don't leave marks. My daughters and I looked at her in total shock and disgust. As the social worker left my home that day, she, said, she told my family that she saw no signs of abuse and no signs of neglect. On September 19th, I received a call from the social worker while I was at work, informing me that she was removing my children from the home because she claimed that my children made um, allegations against me and my fiancé. My children are all teenagers. My children came to this very day. They never made them allegations. They even testified in court that they never made them allegations. There was no evidence. There was no due process. I never got to testify at my hearing. There was never any other attempts made in my home to keep us together. It was automatic removal. My kids have never been abused a day in their life. My kids have never been neglected a day in their life until the day they entered DHS's care. My daughter, Brianna, my 16-year-old daughter, she was put into several different homes where she was neglected, not that she was being refused to eat. She was not allowed to eat. She wasn't allowed to have um, showers. Um, she was being uh, bullied. She was attacked by one of the kinship parents on several occasions. She even went to the police station for help. They um, told her she was just lying. All the allegations that she made against them, all the reports of abuse and neglect, they never looked into it. They just ignored every bit of it. And then when I mentioned it, it was, oh, mom needs more classes. So right now my kids have been put in homes with drug addicts, people with active warrants, and I have the videos of the warrants being uh, issued where they were taking the uh, foster parent out of the house in handcuffs. Um, my youngest one is, my youngest daughter is with the paternal grandmother who lives with an alcoholic who was also arrested for aggravated assault for attacking a woman in a pizza store in front of two police officers. And my 15 year old, nobody knows where she is. DHS has no idea where she is. She ran. And they didn't even try to find her. She tried to, apparently she claims she tried to reach out to a social worker yesterday on a case from COA. I still have not heard from that case worker. She still hasn't called me to tell me like she heard from my child and my child looking for help. So since I don't have much time, I did submit my testimony to city council. Anybody that wants to ask me any questions, feel free to do so. Questions from the panel? Okay, uh, no questions from the panel, but I would ask that you give your information to uh, someone at the table over here so that we can follow up on the location. Okay, Mr. Chow, so you can follow up. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. <coughs> Mr. Lewis? Yes, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, in 2009, I was in the dark when I reached out to the DHS to assist me with my sick son who was coming up for life support on children from Children's Hospital. It was a miracle my child would still be alive. From the hospital, I learned many children with this type of sickness the usually passed away. So I thought it was a good deal to get all the assistance I can, so I reached out to DHS. I think it was a good deal. It was eight years of nightmare. Um, I 
children was kidnapped coming out from hospital and put in foster care. They are plot the union for parents so they could attain the custody of my two, two children. Plot after plot after plot and those uh, parenting class, a uh, psychiatrist, uh, go to uh, parenting, go to a trial, go to the In any event, they hold my children hostage. Uh, it cost me 27,000 legal fee to get my children back. I went to trial and the judge finally ruled in my favor, caught them lying in court, ruled in my favor. They hold my case up for another two years. Okay? They reach out to my children's mother, tell her to come to court to testify that I molested my children when she refused her right was terminated. Okay? Now, we need a new system that will generally look out for the welfare of family and children. We need a system where parents are not deemed unfit, rather lack the resource that the system able to provide those need resources. We need a system that has maintained interest, interest and stop profiting from the development of family, not in the interest of financial gain from backward deal. We need a system to respect family value and not separate family from value. We need a system that is trying to provide the benefit of family that has substance resource of family. Otherwise, we will continue at this DA's mess. Yes. That the family in total, in total mess. And what life would be like where you operate a system in the dark, we need a system that is called DHS brightness. And family with all led to a brighter future. And not in the dark from the past. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Lisa Monkey. Um, so, August 20th of 2017, I gave birth to a little girl who needed her just to deposit the um, They made a call to DHS. Social worker came out and she investigated and I told her that um, I had a medical condition. I then um, released my medical records, my OBGYN and my pain management doctor to the DHS social worker. They said that they would close the case. Um, they, the baby never withdrew off of anything, and they acknowledged that medical uh, conditions exist. Um, once we were released from the hospital, I received a call from the social worker, and she told me she was no longer able to close out my case, um, that she needed to come to my house again to conduct another visit. Once she came to my house, she told me that the hospital had stated that I'd never been to a doctor in my entire pregnancy, um, that I signed my child out without medical advice. Um, there were just all these allegations. However, she would have known they were true because, I mean, they were false because she had my medical records. At this point, I complied with everything they asked me to do. But once the allegations kept going on, I didn't understand why they kept harassing me. I didn't understand why they were there. Everything was perfectly fine. So I sent an email to her supervisor and her and let her know that I would no longer speak with them unless I had an attorney present. Um, at this point, I was petitioning to court. In court, we were not given the chance to speak. We weren't given the chance to say anything, even though they did say our home was safe. They lied. They, the social worker said I said I was suicidal in my medical record. She said I never had a doctor's appointment. I saw my baby out against medical advice. And then they brought my other four children into it, um, saying that I never took them to the doctor and I didn't vaccinate. Um, the judge said it was medical neglect. And me and my fiance, we were handcuffed, we were strip searched, and we were held in a cell for eight hours <coughs> until they had all my children in custody. And I didn't get my children back for eight months, but we fought. We hired an attorney, but we um, filed motions of reconsideration with all the evidence, all the lies, everything they mischaracterized the record with were in the motions. And finally, when Judge Young was removed from the bench, another attorney, another judge, looked at the motions, they looked at the evidence and said, I could explain that to me that day. But it took eight months. The damage that was done in that eight months, 
absolutely missed in that eight months. I was ordered to stop breastfeeding my three-year-old and my baby. I couldn't breastfeed them. We got to see them two hours, twice a week. We couldn't get unsupervised visits. And this happened because a social worker went into court and lied. It's the judge's job to determine whether this person is credible or not. However, they still went in there and they lied. And it happens every day. And you would think that my children were abused, that they were neglected, and they weren't. And they suffered until this day. Even though they're home, we're happy. It's a, it's, it's a traumatic experience that none of us will ever forget. Well, thank you very much for your testimony. Very powerful. Um, Ms. Johnson? I'm finding so many, so many different mentalities today. It seems hard. It seems hard. It seems, it seems challenging. challenging. I don't say it's hard because the only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything else is a challenge. Is a challenge. Um, so, so, so I'm ready. I'm ready challenge. for this challenge, and I was built, and I was for, built this. for this. I think that, I think that we all have, we a, all have a purpose in life, in life. and mine is going to take on a task that, that most that most of back away from. Back away from. from. Impossible. That impossible. What people, people say is impossible. I see possibilities. I don't see. I don't see anything as being impossible. Mentality.